Hello and welcome to another episode of FCC Fan TV. Nick here with Cody. What's going on, guys? Cody, in our pregame huddle, you said you wanted to start off negative, so go off, King. Hit me with that negativity. Well, well okay. I'll, I, to be fair, what I prefaced it with was I, I want to start off with negatives and end on positives today. Usually we kind of do a mixed bag, so <laughs> I just want to start off completely negative. Uh, but yeah, just the fact that we lost the home opener, and it's a game we should not have lost. It's a game we were involved in the entire time, um, and I would say... Two of the goals that we gave up, we shouldn't have given up. Um, so I, I assume first and third. Yes. I mean, what? what which one? Even the second one was bad. Yeah, I mean, none of them were good, but the second one's kind of whatever. Uh, so, speaking of goal giving upping, I was not impressed with Vermeer Vermeer at all. Um, you and I have slightly we watched the first half together. And um, we had talked a little bit after the match, but, you know, we, we played him in there to be a distributor. And when we play out of the back and he distributes the ball like a whole eight yards the whole time, it just kind of made no sense at all. Um, I, I, there's, I think Teton could have saved at least one of those if I would, you know, I, it is what it is, but I wasn't the greatest choice to me to start Vermeer. Um the other thing is Joe Zhao is just not a right back. I think we should. I don't know if it's Zico Bailey is the answer just to see what he's got, but we. I just don't think we. If we want to win games, we just can't let the, essentially that side be exposed on defense for ninety minutes. Yeah, so I'll touch on the first point there. Uh, I would have liked because apparently T Don did not have an injury. He was on the substitutions uh, for the game. I would have liked, considering which we'll touch on here more, that we started two brand new center backs to keep a little more continuity in the back. Um, starting three new players off the spine usually never ends well, and here it didn't. Uh, with Jao, yeah, I mean it's just the defensive instincts aren't there, and it's not. I don't really blame him at this point. No, no. I- then that was never my intention to say he's a bad player or anything. I, he has a role in this team. It's back on the wing. He's just not. He's not a right back. I wonder how many more starts they'll give it. Honestly, at this point, I think they're going to keep letting him go until either someone else is brought in, just to kind of keep that continuity going. At least, at least he's been out there. At least he kind of hopefully is picking up on what's going on. But it looks like they're trying to rein him in even a little bit, and he's not really trying to get down the sides, which. Once again, we can touch on some more, but the way like Barial was playing, he can't really afford to get forward because there's no one there to cover him even more um, in that aspect. So I, I wonder when we'll see Zico or even uh, Castillo slide in there and just kind of be a stay at home right back that goes forward occasionally, but isn't going to try to just dribble it up the field, get into three people and kick the ball into a defender and then be out of position. Yeah, well, we're letting Barrial clearly just have free reign of what he wants to do, and it works. Um, if you pull up the stats from this game, which it, I feel like you're going to do at some point, um, I believe he had three shots and all three were on target. Yes, I can slide over to the MLS's website. I had queued up. I didn't have player ones, but that number does sound correct to me. Check for players yeah. here. Barrial, one goal. Unless the website doesn't have shots, so this is fun. Okay, I believe it was three shots. Yes, three, I believe on, I, you are correct with that from uh, just remembering hearing that. But yeah, it was easily man of the match for me. I don't think there's really oh, any absolutely. any doubt on this one. But even over the past few matches where they've kind of let him have free reign, he, he looks excellent. Like you just either letting him do what he wants to do up there, and it's worked. But having said that, it then exposes that entire right side. And Joe Jow has just not been the answer to cover defensively. Now, if we want to flip to some positivity on the left side, granted, I will, you know, Acosta has only played two of the four matches. So that's the only reason I'm kind of throwing Acosta out of this. But Ronald Matarita has been the best signing we've had for this year so far. He plays excellently up. Is he at point and liability because he plays so far up? Yes. But I have not seen a player on this team besides him, when that ball gets flipped, book it back to the other end as fast as he can 
for every single minute he's on the pitch. You know, he might not be the best player out there, but I've never, I shouldn't say never, on this team I have not seen anyone give more effort than Matarita has so far this season. Yeah, I thought I thought I actually probably had, considering, well, this is strange considering that we had a goal game, we gave up five goals, but I think the first half probably was his worst half he actually played for us, which he was, like I said, noted in my notes, pretty poor positioning on the second goal kind of gets like we mentioned caught out in space but this is like the one time he didn't immediately turn it on and track back he got a late start back and just led to it breaking down and then i guess what was because that was the one where he had to cut in so i don't really know if it's too much on him he got back late kind of played back he had to track lewis morgan in because either he did someone didn't communicate there was a runner cutting in to the center back so he had to drag and follow him in so there was like the whole defense was at a scramble drill on that one. So like I, once again, I don't really know if it's his fault. But obviously playing that ball over the top to Barial, which uh, we tried almost pulled off last week too, I believe, or two weeks ago at this point. Uh, that's a connection we've looked for. The last time we did it, I think it went to Barial and he actually just like skied it completely over the bar. So nice to see we maybe have like one attacking pattern of play down, and it's a Matarita ball over the top to Barial. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that was actually another disappointing thing for me in this match. And we previewed it in our Miami preview last week is that, you know, they'll let you kind of play up until the midfield point where that's when they hit their press and they like to play in that midfield. And if you look at any, I know we couldn't pull steel shot, still shots on this for today. Um, but if anyone goes back and watches that match, you'll, you'll see that they, their defense played up and their offense played back exactly like we said they would. And we didn't go over the top enough. Like it was driving I mean, saying how we were still trying to play from the back and play through the middle and not take chances over the top. They were giving it to us. We had yards and yards of space behind, and we just did. And it's not that it would have been effective, you know, five times out of five, but it was effective the once. And who wouldn't have said it wouldn't have been effective again? It just drove me insane how they could clearly see that there were an entire shirt, you know, white and pink shirts sitting there in the middle. And they just we just didn't take more chances over the top. Yeah, and then every time we did play it, it they were definitely just more like crosses into the box because looking, because uh, that's one thing I noticed. I w- wasn't quite sure of the actual count until I went here and pulled up the stats. We had twenty nine crosses, and not one of them was effective. Like we were just no. huffing the ball in there. And I had a note here in our pregame stuff. Brenner's five, like five nine, like dude tries all game, but feeding the ball through the air to our team of very very short players i don't I don't know anyone besides well center backs which also came in handy later who have any height to whip these crosses in and it just kind of led to our shot uh shot chart for this game which i can kind of pull back here too you look at miami's we had the same like kind of shots on target seven to five or just shots in general were all around even. I believe it was, what was it? Here? It was 11 to 10. Yeah, so nothing completely outrageous. Um, I don't know why Haglins doesn't show up as a shot. I guess because the headers don't show up as shots on here. Uh, but every single one of these is from distance or from a poor angle. And you look at Miami's and they're all pretty much dead set on frame. And I think that's very telling of our offense still. Uh, I noted we still don't look like we have any patterns of play near the 18 and it uh one of the things i noticed here it looks like lucho went a little hero ball for parts of the game which i'm i can't really be mad about but i'm I'm hoping it's not teetering on the edge of he doesn't trust teammates and won't play the ball off to him the last turnover for goal three where harris trying to slid him over probably is not helping that aspect where he's going to trust anybody at any point in the midfield with him so it is just the same same old things came back to bite us over and over in this game. Like there were definitely more positives. We had more of the possession looked pretty okay going forward, but pretty toothless. Once we hit the final third, like we had possession much more in their half, but we didn't do anything really with it. I mean, our two goals came on what a ball over the top and an 80 80th minute corner kick where Hagelin dunked on a guy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the Lucha thing's kind of funny because when I was watching it the whole time, uh, it was, you know, reminded me of lollipop soccer where everyone kind of follows the ball because that's what he was doing. Because every time I looked up, it's like, oh, the ball's in the midfield. Oh, look, there's a Costa. Oh, the ball's in the midfield. Oh, look, there's a Costa. So it's it's a two it's a two sided coin here because yes, you're 100 correct. He was trying to play hero ball. It didn't always work out. 
Is it a trust with his teammates? We just don't know. This was only a second match with us. Ex- yes. Uh, so I'm, I'm willing to give uh, it a pass still. I'm just worried that the farther the season goes on, the more it's going to lean into that. But I mean, also, you can't pass to whoever's not making a move for you. So at the same time, I was like, because I noted here, like, we do nothing to generate any sort of movement to create any sort of holes. And I think it's just, hopefully it's still just a chemistry thing. Cause I mean, I don't really remember Brenner making any sort of crossing runs to try to drag a center back with them for like Barry all to cut into space. Like there just aren't like, this is my biggest criticism at the, well, oh, I don't know about biggest. I mean, everything's been pretty poor still, but just the lack of I- any sort of identity still in the final third, this is a complete carryover from last season. I mean, not completely the same players, but you would think you had enough time to instill in some what you wanted that pattern of play to look like. And I, and it's weird because the best player who's looking on our offense now is Barial, who's got a free roaming role. So what kind of pattern is that? Like, that's just go find yeah. the game. Well, and here's my other side of the coin for Lucho is the only time I got extremely excited in that final third is when the ball was at his feet. Yes. Because at least he was trying to make things happen. He was trying to shake guys. He was looking up the entire time. He was looking for someone and there was never anyone there because no one knows how it's like, no, one, no one has how to move without the ball in the box. And that includes Brenner. Uh, and maybe it's a system thing with him. It, you know, it might not even be his fault. He just doesn't know where he's really falling in this system right now, but he, it's like, it's frozen once he gets to the final eight, you know, final 18. And it's just like, come on, man. <laughs> like, yeah. I, also, $13 million I just kind of want to make a point here. All these like U 22 signings, I, I think there needs to be some sort of temperament for the adjustment coming into the league and just a new situation in general. Like these are young guys. Like it, it is not an easy adjustment for coming from one league to any league, but MLS has always shown. There's a lot of times for these younger players, they don't always hit the ground running. So like these younger guys need to be given, I know the price tag for Brenner, 13 million. You expect, you want him to come in and score roles. And I think he'll adjust quicker than most. I think give it a few more games to get some chemistry as long as Lucho's still in there with him and the goals will come for him. But like Barrial, like looks like he kind of coming into his own and it took, geez, he came in, so what, summer window this last year? Ninth, I think this is his ninth game is what they said on the broadcast. Ninth, yeah, ninth and he's game been here, Pepsi. came in end of last season, has a full off season now, a few games in and, they're looking like he possibly know how to utilize him or at least letting him utilize his skills for what's helping the team right now. So I heard the same thing. Cause like, as I was just thinking about how like Atanga came in for 10 minutes and just still doesn't look like, and, and I, I don't really even nothing, <laughs> no, neg- nothing positive or negative from that. I'm like, I just don't think he knows what he needs to do yet for this team. I don't think he knows. I don't think in his mind he knows his role. And as soon as he figures out what his role is, he'll be fine too. Because one thing, whatever, he's got the speed where if we need to start playing over the top, which it's ugly football and we look like we want to play the, the, the total football Dutch, Dutch system. You know, everyone plays everywhere. Everyone can do everything. Good old route one's going to have to kind of be the option sometimes. And I think that's where him and Brenner are probably going to get a good number of goals at some point through this season. When we finally realize going through the middle through better defensive teams isn't always going to work. It's not saying Miami was a great defensive team, but they at least seem to know what their shape is and what their plan is. Stay, stay narrow, stay compact. And they just let us cross it in all day and we couldn't do anything about it. So like they did exactly what they wanted to do and gave up. To, I don't want to say fluky, but the expected goals of this game, flipping back here to MLS site. Have here point seven to two point three in favor of Miami, and that pretty much sounds about right. Like we had some good chances, um, a couple long rips. Barial had a nice rip from distance that forced to save. Like we talked about, Lucho had a pretty nice shot from the edge of the eighteen that just kind of didn't curl enough. Like I'm okay with the long shots. I think they're good. I noted that here too. I think we should take more of them because honestly, Barial. Well, Barial and keeps Lucho, your, it keeps the defense. It honest. keeps it honest, and it forces them. You can, it just opens more up. If you go to, you know, take that kick and they charge you down, you can sidestep them. It opens up space if a guy has to come crashing in, thinking that shot's going to be on target. It's just 
yeah, like it's just like trying another way to open the open the field up, and I don't think we're doing enough of that. I think we're too wedded to running whatever system this is, and we need to take more chances. Because honestly, like that's the only way we're going to be able to play right now. We have a lot of ground if we want to even kind of sniff a playoff spot at this point. You're going to need to go on a tear at some point. Like we're we're last in the East again. Well, okay. I mean, just this. Like, well, so. You're bringing up, you're really leaning towards what I wanted to get to next, which is a system issue. And this is a Stom issue. He's got to know his players. And if his players can't exactly fit your system that you want, then you got to adapt the system a little bit. Yeah, I mean. Like, and it's driving me insane. Yeah, we, we have a left wing at the eight. We have an eight at the six. We have a winger at right back. Like... <laughs> Uh, and yeah, these are these are his choices, though. I know. I mean, I mean, I had the six one. I'm not as. I don't know. Frank, the whole Frankie thing really threw a wrench into, I think, the balance of the midfield. And I think that kind of gets slightly a pass of a defensive player in there because we didn't really have a chance to sign another one. I think, honestly, we were going to get Frankie ever, as many minutes as his legs could handle this season until you know that situation went out and we got good money out of it but it's still unfortunate because we really could have used a player of his style right now so i'm willing to give a pass until the window see what happens what kind of defensive midfield minded player so that was interesting just kind of a note there to see makoto not make the game day roster at all i'm not really disappointed by that i i've not been impressed with him since he's been here i it unfortunately, it looks like that injury may have really sapped anything he might have had left uh, on the defensive instincts. Like, he, he still looks fine in possession passing the ball, but you can't play him and Kubo together. I liked what Cruz offered out there. He's not a natural six, but considering, you know, that interview Kubo had where there was like, oh, we're going to play with two sixes. I guess in that role, it's not the same or kind of the same because Cruz dig it up and get into the press a lot. I think he had a, just a nice game. It was nice to see him back on the field doghouse out of the doghouse. He was running around trying to make plays happen. I mean, his first real minutes of the year. So I think he looked exactly kind of like the player I remember. And, and that's another, and we can talk about this game. How many, how many players started this game for the first time? Cameron, well, we haven't even okay. touched on center back so, yet. With Vermeer, Cameron, well, Biasia, so, Cruz. Yeah, sure. Four players, like we said, right up the spine like earlier. I, these are the players I want to see starting, and I'm not I'm not mad we started four new players, but it's just kind of some more temper the expectations, probably what we should have expected from this game. Um, and honestly, three of the four I liked. Vermeer, I didn't like. I thought he was going to come in and be the backup, and I was very bitter to see him start. I was not impressed watching him at LAFC or even in CONCACAF Champions League. I don't think he had a good run, even though LAFC did, and he lost his job to his backup, Cisnega. So... Not high on him, but I was very excited to see Cameron start. And my first note on our conversation day was he's already the best center back on this roster. Yeah. But bar none. Outside of the last minute where he maybe should have sat down on the field, we should have kicked the ball out, got him out while he was cramping up. Because you could tell when he was trying to get back to cover that goal, he couldn't even move his leg. He was just kind of swinging. Well, he, it. Was sitting, he was sitting down. Oh, was he? That. I must have missed that. Yes. Okay, and we didn't yeah. play it out. No. Yeah. So and that's that's what was kill so I don't understand it. Someone's okay. gotta be yelling could, out, out, out. That's, that's the thing. I don't know if it's a I don't know if it's a coaching that at that point, was it a coaching issue or was it a player issue that one no one noticed? Or the coaches I mean, okay, it was loud on there for six thousand people, but the coaches are close enough to the field to where if they were screaming, someone would have heard them. Yeah. You because start he, waving was, your hands. he was sitting down. Okay. I must have yeah. missed that on my rewatch. He was sitting down, but like because I just see him. You can tell when he's running back to try to slide in there. His like one leg's not even moving. He's like just like throwing it around. And I'm, I mean, he gave the effort to get back. And I'm, oh no, that was those were the most minutes he had played in a long time. Yeah, and it wasn't because any reason. I think I read a QPR. He wasn't playing a lot at the end of the season because he knew he wasn't going to stay. So I think it was a, a mutual decision out there to kind of keep him rested for a move like this. So, but yeah, first time he played, I mean, started next to Viasia who. But you just want to touch on the center backs all together here. I mean, I think Cameron had a yeah. great game. You could see him out there yelling. He put out a lot of fires. And honestly, when Vanderwerf's back until whenever the heck that might be, who knows, I could honestly see us going to three at the back with Cameron or even Cameron moving up the defensive midfield. 
to cover until we get someone else in. Because I just think he's going to be on the field for us the rest of the season as long as, as many minutes as his legs can handle. He looked great out there. And especially yeah. for considering he showed up midweek and started. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so there's, I have actually nothing bad to say about Cameron. You can't blame him for that third goal. Like we just touched on, his legs were gone. We could see it. I know the coaches had to see it. We just didn't play the ball out, and that's that's our own problem. And look at what happened. Uh, but not his fault. You know, he gave everything he could. And also something cool that I can't remember who brought this up on Twitter. Uh, but if you look at – if you rewatch the two goals, he was the first person each time to go up and celebrate with the goal scorer. So I like the fact that he's already ingrained with the team. Uh, you might not have, you know, the friendships and the, and the love and loyalty yet, but – He's here to play, and, and he loves playing, and he looked good doing it. Oh, um, his, his teammates at QPR had nothing but raved about him when he signed this deal. Yeah. Everything you saw from their fans, their players, was consummate teammate. Yeah. Uh, so, honestly, there's not much more to touch on Cameron. He, he's fantastic. Yeah, and um, even the few breakdowns, like, I'm not, after one game of a new starting pair, like, I, no. as much as I despise how bad our defense is, like, it almost gets a pass again this game, as dumb as that is. But well, when you start two new center backs still... and a goalkeeper, I I, I, can't, I can't actually be mad. I'm just like, I'm I'm disappointed. But there were enough glimpses to where I thought that this should be the pairing. And honestly, I expected them to start coming into this game when we talked about. So I wasn't mad about some of the mistakes they made. Uh, Viasias were a little bit worse. His looked like some definite young player mistakes, especially that second goal. He got, he got punked a little bit by Gonzalo out of position, tracked back, didn't really put in a good tackle to take it there. And then I, once again, I don't know what Vermeer was doing on that goal. It came flying off his line and like into no man's land. So that one was bad. I think of all the ones like was that the first or the second one, that was the first one that Gonzalo just kind of punked him. Right. Yeah. I don't know. They, I, no. they're, they're all kind of, was the first, the, the first one was the, cross oh, the Brexit. The, yeah. That Brexit, happened so quickly. I just, that one just flew right through my head. Yeah, we don't yeah, need to talk about that one. That was just bad. Jal ball watched and got beat. Yeah, the second one, yeah. Viasia just, you know, didn't get back in time, got back, made a half-hearted tackle, got turned. Gonzalo Higuain's going to turn somebody in this league. Like, so I'm not as mad. I didn't like Ali out of position, but once again, first start, first minutes, only been here training two and a half, three weeks. I think he showed enough glimpses. I really, his speed was definitely as advertised and he's a big guy too i wasn't quite ready to see how just kind of like his stature was like looked the part of a center back kind of thing so kind of a middle ground rating for him for me in the game but i liked what i saw he made some mistakes i think for the time being that's our center back pairing of the future yeah i agree and yeah like i'm not gonna blame someone for getting beat by gonzalo higuain he might have came in the league a little rusty last year but we're still talking about a, a long time juventus striker got you know the three years has played for juventus and chelsea so you know he's not he's not a washed up guy that's just coming in the, the guy if he still has legs the guy can score and clearly he still can uh he had two against us the other four on the year already um so no I, i'm not gonna blame viancia for that uh, one thing I loved about the pairing was how vocal they were, and you could see it. They wanted to control that entire their our entire f third of that pitch. Uh, so absolutely love to see that. Haglin came in, which I was fine with. Uh, and the funny thing is, Haglin didn't come in for Cameron, whose legs were beat, because we ended up eventually subbing in Vasquez for Cameron, um, and Haglin got the second goal. So yeah, I want, uh, but I, I want to talk Patterson's about that. Definitely the odd man out. That was a dunk of a goal like oh yeah they that was just and like that no that's what the, I, I that goal was very happy to see because it was a player on this team just wanting to go up and win his individual battle and he just dunked on i think there was shawcross just went up over him shawcross looking for a foul I was like you didn't even jump and he just went up and got that ball and like didn't even touch you until after it already in the net like dunk of a goal you love seeing it like oh yeah and we're going to need some more down set pieces. And Hagelin's shown he can do that last season. Had a few goals from, like, just kind of sad. And I don't know what Miami was thinking on the defense there. He just lined up outside the 18 and got ahead of steam. And it was like, you're not going to put a body on that? And just went to town on him. That was Ripped it. 
ripped yeah. it with his head. I would see it kind of reminded me early in the season. I was watching the what impact Toronto FC game and why Yama went over and just pretty much dunked on Michael Bradley, like the same way, just pretty much like went over him, headed it in and just like landed on him and just took him out and it just stood up and like looked like he dunked on a guy. And I was like, it was nice to see. Well, you could see how much that goal meant to the team and Hagelin when it went in, he was amped. And honestly, it should have at least been a draw from that point. Besides, we get in and the next breakdown we already talked about. So it was unfortunate he didn't get the kind of reward there for that effort. And then unfortunately, he also was kind of involved in the third goal because his clearance didn't clear anybody and it bounced right to Lewis Morgan. It, like, it's, it's just so unlucky. But it just bounced off of him. It wasn't yeah, really like, he, kicked, like yeah. he got it, he kicked it, and went straight to an inner Miami player. And it's just like, man, like that could have just gone to a yard either direction there and we'd have been fine but i would say he did fine in his 10 minute cameo uh do you want to we can just kind of touch yeah. on here the rest of the players here harris oh well, hold on i got i got two okay. things real quick so one one day when we're more technologically advanced and i'm not talking about like people i'm talking about me and you uh we could splice in the fact that i did call a Hagland sometime in the 80 80th minute header goal so i, I nailed that one Second thing is I got trivia mm. for you. All right, so Hagelin scored our second goal in the mm-hmm. home opener in the new stadium. Who scored the second goal in our debut game at Nippers, like our, our first home game? Uh, There's a tie. And that, that's why I'm throwing this out there. There's a tie? It, no, sorry. Like, there's a – there's a uh, I got to think of a better word for tie since we're talking about a sport. I'm not talking about a draw. I'm talking about a literal tie between the two. Oh, like a connection? There you go. Yes, there we um, go. I couldn't think of another word. <laughs> what kind of connection would they have? Uh, they ended up. They both went to college in the city. They're from Cincinnati, right? Okay. There you go. They're Who from on Cincinnati. that first team was from Cincinnati? I believe he's still with the club in a front office oh. capacity. He or he was when he came to MLS. I'm not sure if he still is. Hmm. I think he was a uh, he was in like personal training for the club. That's At least when really first came to MLS. first year, I wasn't because I know Austin Berry scored the first one. But... No, Austin Berry oh, scored did? the second one, right? Oh, did I get that wrong? I might I have got that I, wrong. It was Austin I thought Berry Austin Berry scored one. the first goal. You know, now that I say that, I think, and now that you say that, I think my trivia just went to went to complete to the right, bottom we'll of the pack well. Pack it up. I we'll thought come it was back to trivia goal. for a new segment yeah. next time. What what trip? <laughs> this is why I don't host. Yeah, we tried once and everyone left the bar. <laughs> yeah. all right so let's just kind of rapid okay, fire so we'll, here we'll, through we'll, the rest of the roster for this game uh honestly give me a, a thumbs up thumbs down say what it is for our audio listeners uh when i talk yes. about this player we can go up down middle ground uh harris uh joaquin phoenix in the gladiator where he puts his thumb in the middle and you know if he's gonna go up or down but he stays it in the middle this mm. time I, I have I I I can't as we already touched on it's hard yeah I know your thumbs down it's hard to blame younger players for how they've looked and we're talking about a guy fresh out of college oh. who's who's playing in his fourth MLS yeah so game. oh and also tried to tackle Victor Yoa several times yes so the reason I give him a negative is because he just didn't what I was expecting to see out of him was just hustle. And I didn't really just see him hustle. Like, I don't expect him to be out there, like, making the plays as a rookie who probably shouldn't be starting. But he just looked very disinterested all through it. And then, like, the only thing I really remember, he made that really just dumb tackle to pick up his yellow card. And it just, like, looked like frustration that he hadn't touched the ball. But I was like, he hadn't been moving to touch the ball. So I was just kind of a little sour note on that one. Not really his fault, that because I, once again, don't think he should be starting. But... Overall, thumbs down for me. Okay. So, next one here, uh, Jurgen Lacadio. Let's keep it on the left wing. Oh, two thumbs down. I'm done. It, when his loan's up, his loan's up. He came on and did nothing. Absolutely nothing. Like, he, when we had momentum for that the last 30 minutes of the match, he did not help a single bit. And normally, like, okay, because we'll flip to Atanga here in a second. You know, I don't fault Atanga for coming on. Granted, he's only been here two weeks. But either way, I don't fault him for not really being able to get involved. Lacadia's are a DP. Well, Lacadia was involved. He's wearing- and then he just had a bunch of poor touches, too. 
Well, he kept trying to take players one on one and got beat every single time. Honestly, I think if he would have started the game, we would have felt better about it because no one else actually tries to take any players, which is kind of an issue. Which you need someone that's willing to do that. He just wasn't good at it. You know what I mean? Like, but that's but that's an issue for one of yes. our DPS. He should at least one in. time. That's my, that's my. Opinion. And honestly, I think the minutes thing is probably. Every, it's been rumored that there's a minutes trigger on his loan, so I think we're only playing him at this point. So then we're not really putting him there. And then also we're playing like I thought he'd be better on the left wing. Apparently, I'm complete, was completely wrong on that one. He hasn't really started to show it. Um, but yeah, when he came on, I once again then came on as a winger, which he's not. So just more players out of position. Like at that point, like Brenner hadn't done much. I know you don't want to take your thirteen million dollar striker you paid for off the field but like if you're gonna do like bring Lakati on put him in his natural position and let him just kind of be the target man because at least when if the cross is going to the box at least he's kind of shown he can kind of come down with a couple of them so i just think like more people out of position but yeah i'm, I'm done i just assume he's already out the door yeah thumbs down yep. especially this game normally i'm yep. more indifferent i give him some credit for this one but this one was like he had so many touches that were just sloppy and got away from him and just really killed any sort of momentum we were having trying to come back in that one. Yep. All right, who else have we talked about? Oh, Kubo. Uh, the yep. same middle. I think he's learning the position much quicker than I anticipated. Once again, I, I give him all credit for taking this on and probably, I don't, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, well, any game we've watched together, every time Kubo touches the ball, our excitement literally gets to the point as if he looks up and passes the ball forward or tries and passes the ball back. And, like, that's how I judge him at his position at this point completely. If he looks up and looks – even if he passes it back, but he looked forward, maybe someone wasn't there, so he had to pass it back, fine. I'm getting more but, of those moments, though. Better. I'm getting – he's making more of those, yes. I'm going to push this ball forward. Honestly, though, and then it kind of works into, well, Inter Miami doesn't really press, so they kind of give you the chance to turn and look. So we'll see how this looks against a maybe more aggressive defensive team when they don't really go with the high pressure. So this was a good team for him to actually maybe get comfortable with that still again. But yeah, like at least he, he's making more of an effort and he's looking more like a midfielder. Still think at this point, he, we just need to sign another one and then he can go back to being on the left wing. And honestly, just let him and Barry all just roam. It's kind of interchange. Honestly, yeah. at this point, we got nothing else going for us. So, nope. Um, I think we've kind of covered everyone else already. Like we've mentioned Lucho. Hmm. Uh, we don't. We've mentioned Jao. Whenever I see you. Yeah, I mean, we could say like a Tonga. We already cut on to. Came on for ten minutes, and it, I don't it, think he, anybody. He, the there, he doesn't get yeah, a thumb. It's not his fault. It's just there was just nothing there to really even say bad, good. Like in neutral, FIFA, when just... they come on too late to get the NA unless they scored or something. Kind of like yeah, grading exactly. complete. So, yeah, give me your, I don't know, final takeaway from week five. Okay. Am I disappointed we lost? Absolutely. Am I disappointed in how players played? Some players, not all. Absolutely. Did I walk out of this angry? No. This was one of the better performances. This is the best performance we put on this season. And we could say that's definitely because Acosta came back. Maybe it's because there were, you know, butts in the stands at our home opener. I, I don't know what it was, but they definitely played better. Um, I'm looking forward to next week, or this week, I guess, to see if we keep nearly the same starters. I'd like to see Teton in. Um, and we'll obviously do our preview in a few days here. But if this core unit that they started which is pretty much what we wanted to see for the most part take out calvin harris uh i i, I don't know what we put maybe there just go let a tonga but... get some run put that because like we yeah, keep, sure. we keep talking about one to have that option to play over the top his speed would be the option to that kind of release valve him and brenner so i i wouldn't mind at this point but... like harris i think harris will end up on loan at, at some point here just if not, just for yeah. another slot. But I wouldn't mind seeing a Tonga now that he's been here a while, or maybe I don't know. Like I said, I'm kind of done with Kadia, so I don't even really care if he comes on. I'm like, woohoo! He'll probably only play 45 minutes anyways. So, but yeah, yeah we can touch on that. Um, okay, but overall, looking forward to this week because if this kind of core unit is in there, 
how do they progress from a an a okay looking game this past week to the next game? Do they look better? Hopefully Cameron's legs are back this week. I mean, I just assumed it was a tired thing, I not a knock they said or anything. He was a cramp, um, cramped up, so. All right. So we have our new cramp. It's like Chad Johnson, you know. You just got to get a McDonald's and. Uh, well, it's <laughs> better than Randy Bullock having a pinch. A, a grab. A grab. <laughs> on a by kick calf out. grab, okay. guys. It no, cramped no. on me at the one point I was needed all game. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not get vivid here at the end. Um, but no, I, I want to see how this core unit who, who we're assuming besides maybe like the left wing, you know, Vanderwerf for one of the center backs, maybe oh, Vanderwerf's on the shelf. This is the... like the end of, at least. End of oh, sure, of July. sure. Oh no, I'm not saying Vanderwerf's back, but I'm saying starter wise, you're looking at maybe replacing the left wing, maybe Zhao. And if Vanderwerf comes back, he comes back in center, but most of your guys are in there. How do we now progress? You know, Lucho's going to play his third game. How do we progress? That's what I want to see. Uh, we lost 3-2. You know, do we come out of this next game with a point? I, I want to see three points. It's sad that I'm looking for a point, but that's the, that's where we're at and right honestly, now. Let's be real. And for I the just way we are, to... points on the road, a point on the road is about all we should be hoping for for the quality of team we have, it looks like, at this point. So, uh, uh, You mean the fifth highest paid team in MLS somehow? Miami was number one, weren't they? Yeah, so this was a battle of the giants, and it lived up to the billing. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, it was it was a very entertaining. Match. Oh yeah, hugely entertaining, at least on the rewatch. And living it in the middle of it was a little bit more painful. And then the rewatch, the rewatch was at least I knew what was going to happen, so I wasn't as depressed watching it happen. Yeah. Uh, okay, you got any kind of last thoughts on the match? Disappointed, but more hopeful than I somehow thought. I would come out of that losing three to two. Yep. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Because it was same old mistakes, but they were from different players in different situ. Like I don't know. It was literally the same mistakes we always make, but the fact that they were from different players who looked better. Yeah, <laughs> just, just made, made it like a little. It's like oh, it wasn't yeah. like oh, good. Hagelin and Pedersen messed up at communication in the center backs. You know what I mean? Like. There was more positives that I saw out of the players that are out there, despite somehow the same mistakes being made from different players, that I was at least more optimistic going forward, that I saw what I wanted to see out of who was out there, outside of, for some reason, Kenneth Vermeer. That one's still good. Yeah, no, it, it sucks. Uh, okay, so one thing I do want to touch on uh, as we wrap up here is you were there for the whole match. I had to leave at halftime. Uh, but we went down to the pitch, uh, which is right across from the stadium that opened this past weekend. They did a soft, I believe, was it a soft opening yeah, Saturday? They, I don't know and if it was a soft, Sunday? but they, they were open Saturday and for the first time. Yeah. This place was awesome. Um, plenty of TVs. Uh, behind the main bar downstairs is a literal wall that goes from the first floor to the second floor of TVs. Plenty of seating. They have outdoor spots on the second and the first floor. Uh, really, really cool bar. Uh, I don't know who owns it or whatever, but I'm glad they decided, like, hey, let's open a bar called The Pitch right across in the stadium. Uh, so, no, it, if anyone has a chance to go down there, uh, definitely a place to, even just in general, not even before matches, just watch sports down there. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate it's now the end of Premier League season because I could have easily have seen myself going down there now that everything's kind of getting back to normal vaccinations and places are kind of opening a little more a little more space. Obviously, getting into Ryan House sometimes was a little tough, especially in the early morning, how packed that is. Uh, my place, second place down in Northside, wasn't even in, open on the inside until they were all vaccinated, so I haven't really gone anywhere to watch Premier League. So I'm a little sad. I'm only... I'm not even going to be able to go down this weekend, last weekend of the season. So, but yeah, it was a great place. Um, yeah, wall to wall TVs, wherever you looked, they were changing them every time the game ended. They were putting another one on, like they were on top of it. Yeah. So they had a guy. Yeah, they have a guy that walks around and literally walks around to change TVs as things go on. He changes the sound to whatever's happening. Is very very good experience down there. So kudos to you guys down at the pitch. That was highlight of my day. 
and getting that limited edition match poster for Cincy Club one. I did snag one of those. Yeah, that is I did really snag cool one of those. So I got to figure out what to do with it. Um, it's now sitting in a drawer because I was like, how do I not bend this? So you got to frame. Yeah, it. I know that, but like, I don't. You know, I'm moving like a month. I don't really want to. Yeah. Maybe we'll we'll get the yeah. FC move move into your girlfriend's Damn basement. Straight. We'll get we're gonna get the we're gonna get the <laughs> FC studio down there. I got that. I got that oak barrel thing. I'm gonna just be surrounded. Yeah, I'll get a scarf wall going. I don't think that one's gonna fly. It's your basement, right? Poor, my the hell so. that goes. My corner of the basement. It's gonna be real tight <laughs> though. You know, I got a lot of stuff. Yeah, I gotta fit yeah my that's wall fair. Games too. I don't know how tap it here, but yeah. I don't know how I'm gonna fit. Uh all right. Any any last words for the for the great listeners out there? Um not really. You know, I'm I'm excited no. to preview Montreal, who I think has eight points and is top of the east right now. Yeah, they look good. Which is strange. Yeah, I they look I don't, really good. I don't think they do. I think they look okay. I, I don't when you Yeah, win, they you have win. eight points, uh, but I'm not completely sold on them which is strange oh so they're they're the vince young I, anytime that someone knows how to win but they don't look good doing it i just call them they're tim vince tebow? young so montreal is the yeah i'm a vince yeah. young guy too vince young vince young won on the yeah NFL in the words of vince young yeah we're gonna play in the first half and the second half we're gonna go the f off direct quote <laughs> it's like we're just gonna mess around in the first half and the second half we're gonna go to the f off so that's what we're gonna do starting against montreal we're just, we're just going to go the F off. Four goals a game. Awoke and a beast. Cool. We'll cover that. You mean the, wait, you mean the Orlando Montreal? Are they in Orlando? Or are they oh, no way. Orlando. Or Tampa? Fl- Toronto's in Tampa. Oh, sorry. The Florida. <laughs> Doesn't are matter. Are they in Fort Lauderdale? I don't know. They're are they in Inter- Miami Stadium? Vancouver's in Real. Salt. There's it. Yeah. Toronto's. Oh, you know what? Toronto's I think they are in Tampa. Orlando. Hmm. Toronto's yeah. in Orlando. So, Inter Miami, are they playing it? Not Inter Miami. Is Montreal playing it? Inter oh, Miami? Inter Miami. So, maybe. we're basically playing Inter Miami twice. If you think about it. Either way, it's the Florida. Oh, and uh, also, Club yeah, sorry, Montreal. but not the Impact Club de, Fo- de Montreal. Yeah. Oh, and the, uh, this has nothing to do with us and it's our rivals, but the Columbus Crew are back. <laughs> yeah, 96. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The, the Columbus, the Columbus SC with the nickname the crew lasted about a whole week. They lasted as long as Super. You know League. what I'm excited about when we rebrand next year and we it just goes just as terribly. I'm I'm, I'm here for nope, it. Nope. If we're the since yeah, if we become FC Cincinnati Garys or the Cincinnati Garys, we just nah, that'd be Lions. pretty bad. I'd I'd revel in it though. Maybe we just add. Sp- no, we, we should bring. Lions. Oh, but. Uh, what, what is what is our technical mascot? What is a winged lion? Griffin. It's a. Uh, I, but I don't think this is a griffin. Gary, yeah. Well, yeah. We should just bring. It's, it's, you know, we just need to bring Sprinkles back. We are wor- we are we working on an exclusive guy. interview with Sprinkles too, guys. So just keep that in mind. Sprinkles <laughs> yeah. may be making an appearance here to find out all the dark, dirty secrets that went into him blocking that little kid's PK kick. We're, we're on the scoop. Actually... That's our actual first inside exclusive we're trying to put yep. together. Is what sprinkles <laughs> what what really went into that evening? What you guys don't actually know is Nick actually is sprinkles from the amount of times he gets Dunkin' Donuts in a week. He doesn't get donuts; he just gets coffee. But he is he is sprinkles. That's how I. So the actual. That's how I know sprinkles. Yeah, the sauce. actual interview is with me. Yeah, Nick's actually a big stockholder in Dunkin' Donuts, but it's not from buying stock. It's just from literal purchases of iced coffee. Big right. Nick Van Axel fan. We're going to end it here. This has gone off the rails <laughs> again. We're really good at this. So, Cody, I'm not even giving you a chance for any final words. Have no, a great evening. Yeah, see you guys. Thanks for listening again. <laughs>